Okay. Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. Yes. I have got a gift here from the patron saint, Patrick Cohn. Patrick Cohn, you patron saint of whiskey. Ow. <laughs> you all right there? <laughs> are you uh, from mine like or yours? piercing. Did you? Oh, oh, right. Now. That's bad. It's the base. Don't hit the base on the glass. You just gotta do the side. Good to know. Yeah. Duly noted. <laughs> okay, so I am super excited about this one. And what I don't know before I open it is do we have the original still? And I'm pretty sure still it is gone forever. Oh, still, like you still have. Because that bottle you're looking at over there yes. is no name number two. And no name number one was a really amazing whiskey. Okay. But I think we already drank it all. Mm. So it was just a letdown is what happened. You, yeah. You, For you, mostly. Because you, I got to drink it. You pitched this, this premise <laughs> oh, of no, this really I think I interesting just see it right now, whiskey. Oh, go get it. Ooh. Ooh. That's voluptuous. Okay. This is, this is like red velvet wallpaper. <laughs> there's some, Ooh, there's some, nice. feather, there's some feather boas involved. This is so rich. You know why they don't use names? You ever see eyes wide shut? <laughs> this is the eyes wide shut of whiskey. This one's naughty. Oh, this is rich and yeah. beautiful. Yeah. It's smoky and briny and... There's no names, but there are safe words. Oh, it's whatever the first thing is you poured. I can tell that's a... Oh, don't one. go to the second one yet. I just smelled so it. I just smelled it. I may be it's too late. It's too late. I'm in the deep end of the pool, Daniel. It's more velvety. It is. The second one is more velvety. It is. It is. There's more, more saturation, subtle. more density to those. You said more subtle? I say more density. You say more subtle? I think the density like s softened some of the edges, whereas this one's brighter and well, spicier. Compared. On number one. Okay, so what kind of uh, smokiness are we working with here? I think we're working with like a briny smoke. Yeah. yeah like yeah. wood washed up from... Tell me a, about the no name. Was this... Uh, we're in scotch. Blended. Yeah, this okay. is blended uh, malt, yeah. right? And uh, I can tell you who's in it if you want to know. I do. you want to know right now? Or do you want to wait until you taste it? We'll taste it first. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh man, this is so much up my home turf. <laughs> oh, it is dark fruit, dense, rich, and beautiful with a, just a nice layering of char, like the outside Salt. edge of brisket. Salty char. Yeah. Salted meat. Yeah. But it's like where you just get the charred edge or a, or a grilled steak where you've got the blackened edge on the grill marks. Yeah. It's uh, the smoke's not dominating and being like, I'm smoky compared to generic smoky. No, it leaves room. Like, here's, here's the thing. It's very present. It's, yeah. It's, it's not, you're not having to hunt for it. But it makes room. It still leaves space for these other flavors to come and in, in play along. And the other flavors are these really fruity, like stewed fruits, cooked down fruits. Like right. you would put into a pie filling or something. Yeah, it's just the fruits that have been so, there's so much heat that it's just bleeding the flavor out of those fruits there. Oh, that's- God, the dark fruits. And then there's like That a, is glorious. There's like a, This might have just become one of my favorite Compass Box releases. Yeah, it's very serious. So, Com so Compass Box, who did they blend? Because Compass Box, for those that are unfamiliar with, they're out of the UK. Yep. They're a, uh, they're, they don't make their own whiskey. They source and blend with just exquisite precision. Yeah, I think one of the great palettes of our time yeah. is that company. And uh, the vast majority of things they've put in the bottle, we really, really enjoyed, with very few exceptions. 75.5% mm -hmm. Sherry Cask Coolila. Okay, all right, all right. 10.5% yeah. American Oak Hogshead 
Yeah. From Talisker. Oh, Talisker. Interesting. Yeah. Oh. 13.5%. Yeah. American Oak Hogshead from Kleinleash. Okay. Okay. Who we like. Okay. Yes. And yes. at 0.5%, yeah. just a last little dab yeah. of a Highland Malt blend. Okay. So a mix of other Highland Malts. Fair enough. The Kulila does not surprise me. Mm -mm. Uh, everything after that, I had no idea what could possibly be in there. And then Kulila, what proof do you usually get a Kulila at in the box? Well, I mean, if you just go buy, it's going to be in the 40s. Yeah. Well, what is this? This one, 48.9%. Oh, it's still lower than what I was thinking. Yeah, I was, I was thinking, thinking hotter it, than it that. It had to be like low to mid 50s, but no, okay. Yeah. No, that's exceptional. Well done. Like smoke, smoky, well done. smoky scotch lovers, this is oh, it's exceptionally glorious. good and amazing and tasty. Okay. Good things. Okay, you want to compare it to the previous? Are these just yearly releases, or did you say there was a finish difference between these two? No names. Uh, I need to look up No Name One because it's been so long since I drank it because there's hardly anything in here. Okay. I've not touched it for a long time because I didn't want to just drink the last of it. So let me look sure. it so up. So we have uh, Tyler Brownfield. Please tell me I'm not alone in this. I drink my bottles until I get about one fourth left and I'm like, oh God, no, I can't finish that, which is what you're saying about this No Name. Uh, and they will stay at that same level for months. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you get to, it's like, I, I have very few bottles in my house at any given time. Anywhere from one to three, most often. Um, and once the bottle gets down to about, you say, like a fourth, yeah, for me it's about a fifth to a third. Then I start to get very, very conscious of how often I'm ever going back to that bottle and, and pouring a little sippy sip. And that was going all well and good until my wife decided that she kind of likes whiskey, too. <laughs> I can't throw brandy under the bus. No, you really can't. can't. Yeah. So basically, my plans to conserve and ration whiskey. Uh, yeah, my lady kind of threw that game plan out the window, which I'm, I would more like. I more appreciate having uh, a wife that likes whiskey than I like being able to hold on to some scraps of bottles for a little bit longer. That's what I tell myself as I rock myself to sleep in the fetal position. <laughs> What did you find out about that whiskey? Uh, it's more Ardbeg. Oh, it's Ardbeg in the yeah, first yeah, yeah. one. Okay. Because oh, there's man, so it's many totally sim different smoke. Oh, well, there's there's a lot of similarities too, though. Yeah. Like they're going. You can same tell, family. Yes. Yes. You're, you're, it's Isla, basically. You're in the same category for sure. They're definitely even siblings. Like there's the family resemblance. And then I get more of like a candy sweetness on the Ardbeg version of the of the No Name. Yeah, and more of the brine salt brine. Yeah. On the number two. Yeah, yeah. And the Ardbeg one. Oh, they're so one. good. See, that number one, that's why I've saved that whiskey. Because yeah. son of a bitch, they're amazing. Yeah. And that's the fun That's ah. the fun part of the A-B comparison. I don't know if I ever would have pulled out like a like a sweet tart candy sweetness. Until you had A-B Until I did an A-B yeah. yeah, from the Ardbeg no name. Yeah. We got... Uh, see, the thing is, by the time... The exposure with the camera and the, the editing and the color balance and all that is done. It looks like I'm in a really well-lit area and I have to tilt this forward. I was like, what are you doing? You're an old man. You can't right, see it's, it. It's really <laughs> dark. I can't see the, but it doesn't look like that. Um, enjoying Sam. This was, oh, I'm saying the name. Prinzern. Prinzern. Sampled my, oh, enjoying sampled my infinity bottle at uh, the halfway point will be hard to leave it alone see here's the thing i have the same problem yeah. when i've done blended infinity bottles or just mix things together yeah, yeah. there's a moment where it turns like oh mm -hmm. oh shit. this is great right and then and then you have a decision to make do you start a fresh infinity bottle and stop right there yeah do you stop because you made something amazing you know what or yeah. do you just go screw it it's an infinity bottle we keep going i so i this is just me. You do it the way you want. There's an Infinity Bottle episode on the Whiskey Tribe channel that talks all about how to start up your Infinity Bottle. Um, and Fancy Dan, I'll link it up here. Uh, in my perspective, so you can't see Daniel yawning. I look at him and I'm saying this. He's yawning. I am and tired. Is my, I'm, sh I'm sharing my very relevant and valued perspective I did totally, right in my face. I totally did. yawning. I did. That is, that's true. I 100%. 100% just yawned. 
at Rex, like aimed in that direction. I'm excited to share. I was, I, I have, look, I'm, I'm not animated. sorry. I'm enthusiastic. I'm just not sorry. I think it could be a valuable perspective. <laughs> and he just shot at me. He's shot. <laughs> I didn't even cover my mouth. <laughs> It's a really aggressive job. Um, I have no problem starting like a, another Infinity Bottle. It's kind of like the point, right? An Infinity Bottle, you want to blend something new and interesting to your palate, and once you find that point where it's like fantastic, Son then just camp out, just let that be its own thing and start a fresh one. I was going to say the exact same thing. Yeah, the moment and you, you, and you wouldn't onto have something, yawned while you were saying yeah. it, would you? <laughs> the moment you stumble <laughs> onto something magical, yes. stop! Yes! That's the point of an Infinity Bottle. Yes, yes. Now, hopefully you have been keeping track of what went in there and in what proportions. Yes, for the love of God. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I'm, you like, know it'd be fun? See if you can recreate it on purpose. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, I was going to say that too. Uh, and the fact that you said it before me, and I didn't yawn at you while you were saying it. <laughs> You're a giver. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've been trying to figure out an interesting angle to do um, infinity bottle content on the Whiskey Tribe channel. Yeah. But it's kind of like we did that episode explaining what it is and best practices and how to do it, and blah, blah, blah. But after that. Maybe that's the idea. Yeah. Maybe we create something and then when it becomes truly amazing, we keep, because we've kept track, Right. we go back and see if we can redo it on purpose. So maybe Magnificent Bastards who are doing Infinity Bottles, mm -hmm. maybe where there's like an area or a page on the website or someplace, yeah. where once they stumble upon something they're huge fans of, they share what's in it and in what proportions, mm -hmm. and we, recre we recreate that and then sample it and review it. Yeah. You gonna yawn again? All right, we got discussion reviews from Father Fudgeface. You know what you did. <laughs> uh, how much attention do you pay to whiskey reviews? When you're thinking of picking up a bottle, do you research reviews or do you like to go in blind, so you know, to speak? I thought about this Personally, for myself. I like to hear what people have to say about whiskey before I buy it, but I tend to take every opinion with a pinch of salt, as you should, until you find yeah. a reviewer that has similar taste to your own. I was thinking about this and thinking like, yeah. what do I do? Yeah. Like, I watch the other YouTube channels. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm always looking to see what Scotch Test and Roy and, you know, Bourbon Night are, are saying about things. Yeah. Ralph. Because I'm curious, Ralphie. Ralphie. Too. Yeah, yeah. But when I'm in the store. Right. I don't do that. I, I buy something on curiosity, right? and then when I get home, I look to see what other people thought about it. Oh, uh, that's interesting. Yeah, so I think, I, I was thinking about it because I'm like, I, you know, what do I do? That's my well, pattern. I go and I look, right. I buy something that sparks my interest, right. and then when I bring it home, that's when I start looking to see what people thought. Well, I think that waiting until you get home, that's perfectly valid because um, one of the fun things about tasting with other people is the power of suggestion. Mm -hmm. uh, and oftentimes, you know, this is like, I'm getting like a graham cracker note and you're getting no <gasps> graham cracker. Son of a bitch, there it is. Yeah, but this, the moment they said graham cracker, you're remembering graham cracker, that reference point, and then all of a sudden, oh, there's so much graham cracker in this. Yeah. So reviews on the channels, the videos, the, the podcast, whatever. Um, that could be a nice little, you know, tasting companion to see yeah. what other people are getting and see if you can find those same flavors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right on. Here's to fighting, stealing, a dream. If you fight me, I fight for a friend. You steal me, you steal your lover's hearts. Oh, that's a trick. <laughs> <laughs> May you May drink, you drink with us. us. <laughs>